And there it is. Ole Miss has won the national championship. Coming off a 2021 title, standout performer Chiara Tamberlini paved the way for the 2022 squad, finishing top 10 individually at the national championships. Good run by Chiara, two under on her round today. Back in their winning ways, the 2023 Ole Miss women's golf team boasted top three finishes across all four tournaments during the fall season. After clinching a pair of team wins and a pair of individual wins, they now look forward to the spring season. Essentials. Yeah. Ooh, definitely go go squeeze. Applesauce. Huh? That's yeah. a go go squeeze. <laughs> Beef jerky with teriyaki. A few. I don't even know what these are. Fruit snacks. Fruit, Fruit snacks. snacks, but they're basically <laughs> candy. <laughs> peanuts. Loose peanuts. Oh, yeah. Oh. And grass. When's the last time you cleaned out your bag? It's Probably. been a while. I don't really have any superstitions. So I don't really bring a whole lot of extra special stuff. I don't know, I always bring like one little necklace that I wear for all my tournaments. I actually lost it last semester, um, which was quite sad. My trusty dusty shoes. Oh, there you no, go. They're no, they're they're super 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 th these are my, actually, th these are my good luck charm. I have not played a collegiate golf round at Ole Miss without wearing one of these. <laughs> Can I see your good luck charm? Cute. Why is it marked like a soccer ball? I have no clue. I think I found it in the trees somewhere. <laughs> there you go. Ready? Bye, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Ellie. It's so special for us to be able to travel to Mexico twice within two or three months, really and then kind of back that up with going to the Bahamas. I mean, personally, I've never been to the Bahamas. And I don't think any of my teammates have either. So it's just, it just makes it so much more special being able to compete in such a beautiful, beautiful place. We're going to the Bahamas. Very exciting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 54. Rats. I'm three and a half pounds over, but we're bringing snacks this time, so I think that might be all my applesauce and my protein chips. So we're gonna throw it in Nat's bag because she was five pounds under. I don't know how. Do you have any snacks? In here. In here. In here. This way, Get Starbucks. Starbucks opens at 4 30. Jake Flay doesn't open until 6 30, I think. So we went with Starbucks today. We got the Impossible Breakfast Sandwich, Dragon Fruit Mango Refresher, and the Jack Breakfast Set. Good morning and welcome on board American Airlines flight 1373 service to Charlotte. Their flight time will be one hour and 11 minutes. I sat next to uh, Andrea, Kiara, and Coach Corey, so we talked for the whole hour, so I apologize to anyone that we were sitting next to, but I'm pretty sure it was entertaining, so. We just chatted a little bit, had some fun with it, talked about life, you know, but it was good. Excited for the next one. Thank you. Those are places I'll probably never get to like go to otherwise. Um, so it's just like a great opportunity like that's one of my things like why I even chose to play golf because you just get to go to like these amazing places that you would never see otherwise. 
<laughs> I'm mic'd up, baby. <laughs> You're next. It's so weird. It's like a walkie-talkie, but like, but I can't hear her. But how cool. We're mic'd up with the goat here and Natasha. Live, good. live from hole We're six. How's the feed over there? Can you hear us? <laughs> what are you aiming? Oh yeah, that's perfect. Honestly, I should just get a camera out every time you hit because you rip it. Honestly, that was sick. I'm already self-conscious about it, like the amount of times that I've just wanted to say rats. But I talk to myself way too much. To be that was so good. It's like somebody just covered me in sand and buried me alive. Sugar scrub. Oh, rats. Oh, rat, rat, rat. Rat. What do you call the shell? Conk? Conk. 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 Where did my putter go? Oh, I'm holding it. You're off of them. Birds. Let's go. that every time lucky no well she she declared that her lucky charm yesterday okay, okay. <laughs> I have no clue what maybe he's talking about <laughs> but that's probably because I'm uncultured L7 weenie what movie is that from L7 weenie no Gatorade uh, Gatorade Waterboy oh, yeah, definitely haven't seen that what is L7 Weenie though? I can't remember Sandlot. the name of Sandlot. I've seen it like 18 times. I'll take it personal if you want me to take it personal. No, 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 no. Look how baby this bunker is. It's so precious. I'm like positive 14 in my putting game. <laughs> no, no, that's good. Okay, good, I was just checking. Well, you don't have to put that in there. I'm just kind of talking to you at this point. <laughs> we're at the water park, the water in, park in Bahamas, and we're about to go on another slide. That's so, right. yeah, we're ready. Let's do it. All right, all my swimmers go take on the water park. around in that water park. It was amazing, it was so much fun. And that just kind of shows how how much fun we have as a team and like how we all love each other. I mean, this group of girls is amazing. It's like an underground cave <laughs> with an aquarium and you can see all these fish and sharks. And then there's like a little waterfall. And we are live. We are about to swim with the sharks that are in the aquarium attached to the pool. Look at him, he's a baby! So if we make him scared, he like... They don't work. Look, oh, there's 
Coach Corey Hinkus and company head to the Bahamas for their second business trip of the spring campaign, ready to compete in the Nexus Collegiate Invitational with the nation's best. I thought the golf course was spectacular. Uh, it was the first time I'd ever been there. Uh, the Albany Golf Course did a great job in hosting as far as the setup. Course setup was different every day. It was really like a big experience to get to like almost like walk the same fairways and play some of the same shots that you know that these big personalities in golf have gotten to do as well. It was really cool. I mean, it was a challenge for sure. I mean, I've seen it on the PJ Tour, like watching the Hero Challenge. Um, I mean, it's just like a golf course where you just, I mean, the person that misses the least, like, wins. When you get to championship-style golf courses and championship-style venues, I think, which Albany is, uh, especially when you have the talent that we had there as far as the depth of the field um, and over par wins, it, it takes uh, a lot of precision, it takes a lot of patience, uh, and then it takes a lot of, I think, positive self-talk. Precision was the name of the game while navigating through the West Indies wins. I think this course is probably the hardest one we've played in college golf. I do think that it kind of right out of the gate just hit you in the mouth and it was, you know, are you ready for this or not? The conditions made it much tougher with the wind picking up every day around 20 miles per hour. I've never played a tournament with that much wind every day. That did make it very hard, especially um, course managers, management as well. We had to adapt on the go basically every single day. And with the wind, the fairways get a little bit more narrow and you miss a few more of them because like your ball gets taken away by the wind. So it required a lot of thinking and just really good execution of the shots as well. They're all players at a, of elite level. You know, they would be the first to tell you that, you know, might have took them a little while to kind of figure it out. Uh, but that's the name of our game and the name of our sport. You know, we get different conditions, we get weather, we have to play in the weather. Sometimes they can be, you can hit a golf ball and there's like a gust coming and it just goes like where you did not expect it to go. You can't get used to the golf course. Uh, and I think in a new golf course, you want to play the same golf course every day so you can kind of get grounded in what your game plan is going to be, where you're going to attack. When you get three different wins, it changes everything. One day you could hit driver sandwich and the next day it's driver six iron. You just have to really focus on where to leave the ball. Um, if the wind does something that you know maybe you didn't account for, you want to be in the best spot possible for your next shot. Um, so I think you just have to take it easy, take it slow, and just really be patient. Um, I think a lot of times people start trying to swing at it harder and try to hit it further and that's not really going to help. So um, I think you just really have to um, calm down a little bit and take things a little bit slower and during the windy days. Calm and confident are keys to Kiara's game, and they do not disappoint in round one. She's really the core, I think, of the team when I think of like Ole Miss. Kiara is very detail oriented when it comes to what she's going to do before each shot, which I think is fantastic. She probably does one of the best yardage books that look the most like a tour player would do. When it comes to doing what we would like to see as coaches, sometimes she doesn't have her game, sometimes she has her game, but no matter what she has, she figures it out. thing going into that week is we're going to make bogeys. We need to do our best to stay away from the double bogeys, the triple bogeys, and that's what Kiara did so well. I just realized, especially in Bahamas where the conditions were really tough, like you're just not going to hit the perfect shot that many times during a golf round. She just did a good job keeping her composure and knowing, hey, I have a great short game, I can get this ball up and down and move on. The greens that we played in Bahamas were really small compared to what we usually play. So then that obviously makes it a lot harder to hit the greens. And then once you were on the greens, they were not extremely fast. So like it took a while to like figure out that you can actually like aim inside of the hole. Once you figured that out, like for me personally, I gained a lot of confidence and started putting them a bit more aggressive. With increased comfort, Tamberlini turned her focus towards maintaining a positive attitude within her game. The biggest thing that I've worked on these past few tournaments and that I've learned from as well um, was kind of my attitude. 
that I have on the golf course. You know, us coaches, you know, we try to obviously instill positive self-talk in them and, and, and build them up. Positive self-talk in golf is everything because you have so much free time just to yourself. It's not a reactionary type of sport. So I think it's important to, to tell yourself that you're great and to tell yourself positive feedback throughout the day. And I think that's what I've been trying to focus on and what I've been able to improve up on a little bit. I think that's, you know, a game changer for these players that are top level players is that they really talk to themselves in a positive manner. In round two, sophomore Natasha Houston brought an attitude that followed in the footsteps of her Swiss senior. She's a fantastic person on and off the course. She's super level-headed, probably one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. I think you can just see the growth from her and the maturity level on the golf course. Um, she's doing a better job with keeping her cool when you know maybe she doesn't hit her, her best shot because she can be a little tough on herself at times. I went into the second day with an idea of like wanting to enjoy it a little bit more because I knew that the scores were going to be a like a little higher than maybe at like the usual tournaments that we play. The course was a lot more playable I would say in that second round. You could use that to your advantage with like the mentality that I tried to bring to the golf course that day of just enjoying it helped a lot because I was not like I wasn't stressing about having to put a good score together it was more like I'll take the opportunities as they, like, as they come. I feel like that did help a lot. This is a game, and you know, yes, we're here to win because the game has winners and losers, but also within the process, you have to have fun at what you're doing, fun at why you're there. And so I just try to remind Nat of that. You know, sometimes she can get a little too hard on herself or get down, and I'm just really there to pick her up. Me and Nat have a great relationship on the golf course. I think that she's very much a happy person and a good big personality. So, you know, the, to talk golf, to talk other things in golf, I mean, I'm sure we, we dance a little bit when we're out there and, you know, we kind of just have fun with it. And I think that puts her in the mindset that no matter what, like, everything's gonna be okay. And when Nat's happy and she's smiling and she's dancing, like, she's really, really good at golf. I think Coach Sag is really good at helping me like balance like thinking about golf and all these important decisions that we have to make while we're out there, but still having fun and enjoying it while we're out there. When the, the time presents itself and I can't walk with her for an extended time, I think it really benefits our team. Because uh, when that's playing well, you know, usually we're playing very well too. With all the variables at the Albany Golf Course, there was one constant, Andrea Lignell. Dre is very calm and cool and collected. You don't see a lot of emotion from her. I would say that Dre is very level-headed. I think the right word to use for her might be like chill. To me, she does not seem like a type that gets like ahead of herself. Like she, she's really good at like staying in the zone. Dre's like your, your silent assassin. You know, she's just gonna like mow you down and not say a word to you. Before you know it, she's beating you by 12 shots. She really doesn't let bad shots affect her on the course in a negative manner. And it's been, I think, night and day. And I think that's why you've seen so many great results from Dre this last year because she's really learned to just, you know, let it go. I think if you ask Andrea, I think she said that she played really well, you know, minus a couple holes, which goes back to how precise you have to be. You know, she's been very, very consistent, but it's really hard to not slip up. I mean, I think I just try to stay pretty, like, level-headed, because obviously a bogey is going to come every now and then, even a double, like, high numbers, and everyone, like, everyone is making them. Um, so it's just not me. Like I said, when Andrea's back there, and, and you know Andrea's hitting fairways, and she feels good with where her swing and where her irons are at, it literally feels like a putting contest, you know, how many putts can she make, you know, how, what's her attitude like, because I think that's a big part of it. It's very important to be a consistent player when you're playing against some of the best in the, in the world because they're going to lap you if, if you have a little mishap and start making some double bogeys or kind of lose your focus for a bit. You know, anything can happen, so you don't, you don't know what a good score is going to be when it's really hard and tough out that day. So you just have to go out and do your best and you just have to stay cool, calm, collected and just do what you can. Ultimately, the week proved to be a battle test for the season ahead. I think it's always good to play the best fields that you can. The best competition is going to breed, I think, the best results in the end. I think it'll prepare us pretty good moving forward. I think the three tournaments that we have left in March are still going to be really strong fields. Um, but I think that's the SEC. That's what Ole Miss is. You, know, you want to play against the best, and that's one reason why you come here. It's a good way of, like, 
measuring yourself and figure, figuring out which parts of the game that we need to work on and focus on in order to get better going into like postseason and stuff coming up very soon. Well, I think it just kind of shows the grit that we have as a team that we kept fighting even though we weren't where we wanted to be after round one and then just gradually we worked our way up a little bit during the week and I just think that shows how motivated all of us are and how eager for success everyone is. I feel like there is a lot of potential for this team. We are a lot of like really great players individually and I know that if we put it all together we can do really great things. I know we have the talent level and I know we can do it. I know we can be successful and have um, a great run at the end of the season. So I'm really looking forward to what comes in May and end of April and May. What's up, guys? <laughs> oh, there's a cheese stick. <laughs> show, us, show us your scar, your battle wound. How'd you get that? I uh, hit the bottom of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> at the water park. Doing what? Falling out with the raft head first. <laughs> Falling out. No, oh. she rolled out like a freaking me ball. <laughs> Hot. I can count one to twenty in Danish. I almost said Denmarkian. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my gosh, oh. my luck is all the way. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. In, two, tre, five, five, six. We are about to uh, have a little race down the water side. Actually, I think they abandoned us. <laughs> You're that coming home with me. You know what? Exfoliation. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I have... <laughs> yeah, I have 21 brown balls in my bag. Gold grapes? Yes. Sutton, Etten, Nitten, T of A. I'm a miss. I'm a bit toasty about that, I think. Thanks for the clinic, Dre. Skrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr